Can you see it? Yes, yes, we can see it well. This is an update of the presentation that I showed last year. This time, we are going to focus on interconnection hubs. What are the elements that are required for, for a city or market to be considered a hub? So we are going to analyze five regional markets. What is a hub? A hub is a, a city or a market that uh, tends to have uh, uh, geography, economic conditions. Uh, um, in, in the case of telecommunications, there should be uh, terrestrial or subsea fiber connections. Uh, so the hub needs to have rich terrestrial fiber uh, connections, business climate favorable to global networking, peering and um, data centers, uh, effective venues for co-location and affordable IP transit prices that go hand in hand uh, with the prices of transportation. So let's start with submarine cables. Wait a second, because I'm trying to remove something here. This uh, chart shows the amount of money invested in uh, submarine cables from uh, in 2018, 2020, and then the period 2021, 2023 in Latin America. $1.2 billion were invested in the first period, 2018-2020, and 0.8 billion are expected to be invested from the 2021 to 2023. Latin America was uh, the region that invested the most in the first period. Um, How many cables are the operating in the region. Well, that information can be found in www in, in our website, and it's free of charge. And we have 71 cables in service that are connected in a country in the region. And there are several projects underway. Those projects are 10 in total that have been announced publicly and I'm going to explain them very quickly because there are several. The first is the GigNet1 cable that is to connect Mexico with Florida. Then we have the Galapagos cable system that is expected to connect uh, the Galapagos with uh, Ecuador. Then Firmina, this would be the fourth cable that Google is investing in in the region it would have connectivity with the east coast of the United States. And then we have the Aurora cable system. This system is expected to connect several countries in South America and Florida. Then we have the Borican submarine cable system in the Caribbean with Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Then we have the um, uh, Cuba Martinique cable, deep blue and deep blue one to connect Trinidad and Tobago with Suriname, Guyana, and uh, the French Guyana. And finally, the Caribbean Express, Panama, Mexico, and Florida. Other projects have been proposed. Uh, the Humboldt submarine cable proposed by uh, by the government of Chile that will connect Chile. Um, and then there's another project connecting Argentina with Antarctica proposed by Silica Networks. And there are rumors of a cable connecting Central America and the US, but that's a rumor. 
So there's a lot of activity in the region. And let me say that these projects have been announced officially. Several of them are already underway, but there are others that are still in uh, fundraising to uh, uh, complete them, to be able to launch them. So not all of them uh, are going to be completed. Another important thing for a market to be considered a hub is that it should have the presence of uh, uh, Internet ex uh, Exchange offices. Uh, um, according to IXD, Amer in Latin America, there are 102 um, exchange points. And to give you an idea, in 2016, there were 60 uh, Internet Exchange uh, points. And in five years, they increased to 102. So we have 42 new uh, exchange points. Argentina and Brazil are the countries that have the largest number of uh, uh, internet exchange points. Another important thing for a market to be considered a hub is that it needs to have the presence of cloud service providers. These are the companies such as Microsoft, uh, Oracle, IBM, uh, Google. At present, the region has seven regions, seven cloud regions, and several more projects are projected. Google, we have the first cloud in Chile, then there will be another one for Brazil. In Chile, it will be in Santiago. Microsoft announced three projects, one in Mexico, in Santiago de Querétaro, another one in Santiago de Chile, and one in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Oracle, a few months ago, announced its cloud region in Mexico, in Santiago de Querétaro, and a few days ago, they announced one with four, 14 new regions, cloud regions, including and Colombia and Chile. Um, Oracle hasn't uh, specified, but they're planning to work together. Then, um, in uh, it's it's important to have neutral data centers in Latin America. There are several and various uh, providers of uh, neutral data centers. The ones that I have here are the only ones that have a regional presence. And you may notice that it's the same countries where the companies are investing in the data centers. And this uh, is quite significant as to the economy and connectivity. Ascenti started this year with other data centers and many of them, uh, well, uh, several, seven in Brazil, two in Chile, Brazil, well, Equinix, um, um, Excel has announced uh, um, it, uh, projects in Brazil and Mexico, or data in Chile and Mexico, and Scala data centers in Brazil, Chile, Colombia, and Mexico. So, what do we need to be a hub? Well, you need international connectivity in the region, and it's this graph here. It shows the bandwidth, the international internet bandwidth in Latin America in 2017 and in 2021. And uh, um, a few months ago, uh, the region had 91 terabits per second. The characteristic is that most of the connectivity is concentrated in South America, and that should not uh, surprise us, because countries like Brazil, that is almost uh, uh, where that concentrates most of the activity, is uh, very well covered. In order to divide the three sub-regions, South America had 62 teras. Central America 28 and the Caribbean almost three. Uh, of the, so the total amount is 68%. So this, we wouldn't be able to have a, a presentation of telegraphy without speaking of prices. The first uh, prices are of, of transport. Here we have the weighted, the weighted uh, uh, 
median in uh, uh, 10 gigabits uh, per second uh, um, in the in the second quarter from the second quarter to 2018 to 2021 but the prices are changing four of these routes have prices under three thousand dollars but as an average the there was a reduction of the prices from 22 to 23 percent in the last three years i want to highlight something that is important because uh, some people say well that's very expensive uh, uh, and that doesn't reflect the current uh, condition. But remember that is this is a weighted median. So from Sao Paulo to Miami, the median is $6,000. And the lowest price reported in, Ju in July was uh, 3,500. Uh, uh, 3, Most go from uh, range from uh, 3,500 to 6,000. This is only as a reference. This, the next slide is the pricing trends of IPT. It's very similar to uh, the um, to what we see in uh, the transport prices. We see a reduction of 24-25%. Uh, uh, this in recent years and this year, 33%. And you see that Sao Paulo and Mexico City are different worlds with respect to the rest of the, of the region where the prices are less than one dollar. Do I have uh, 10 minutes? I have five more slides to go. Let's uh, go to uh, five markets. We, I chose f five markets because three of them have the greater connectivity internationally. We'll start with Sao Paulo, Brazil. Sao Paulo ranked number one in terms of international internet capacity this year with 13.6 terabits per second in 2021. It grew 25% between 2017 and 2021. Sao Paulo has five cloud regions, AWS, Google, IBM, Microsoft, and Oracle. And the subsea cables don't land. These land in the cities that are nearby, which are Praia Grandes and Santos. There are seven submarine cables in service. And in Firmina, will, this will land in Praia Grande by 2023. And Sao Paulo evidently connects a very rich ecosystem in terms of data centers and also of IXPs. Buenos Aires ranks number two in terms of international internet capacity with 13.3 terabits per second. Buenos Aires does not have a cloud, but they have IXPs and data centers the submarine cables don't land in Buenos Aires, but they land in the neighboring city of Las Toninas. And in fact, this year, the cable landed there and provides connectivity between Argentina and Brazil. And Firmina will, as I said, land in Las Toninas. Then we have Mexico 3, which ranks number three. They have 9.2 terabits in 2021. Nine, it still doesn't have any cloud region yet, but there are two that have been planned, one of Microsoft and one of Oracle. And they're going to be in the cities of Santiago, in the city, sorry, of Santiago de Querétaro. This is a neighboring city. Santiago Chile ranks number four. Santiago is important mostly because it provides connectivity with the Pacific. It reached 8.2 terabits per second of international internet bandwidth. And this shows an increase of 31% between 2017 and 2021. 
between 2017 and 2021. It has one cloud region in service and there are two planned cloud regions, one for Google and one for Microsoft. There's a third one, which is the second Oracle region in cloud. In Chile, an Oracle one, it will probably be in Santiago. There are sub five subsea cables that land in the neighboring city of Valparaíso. And finally, Fortaleza Brazil. Brazil is, has an important location in Brazil, Fortaleza has 11 submarine cables which land in that city. Fortaleza provides direct connectivity to the United States, but also direct connectivity to Europe via the Ella Link Campbell and also to Africa via the Stacks and the SAIL cables. The city has it reached 5.2 terabits per second of international bandwidth connectivity and it grew 33 percent between 2017 and 2021. So that would be all. I will stop sharing and if you have any questions you can ask me now and otherwise this is my email contact. Thank you Anai for your presentation. Without doubt, this is most interesting for the entire community. And there are likely many questions. Jorge, would you like to ask the questions? Well, in principle, we have two questions here, but maybe more questions come up soon. The first question is from Asael Fernandez. Good morning. Once again, congratulations on the presentation. How do we define or how do we take into account the neutral data centers, only those located in universities? Hola. Okay, me ven. No, un data center neutral. No, a neutral data center is one that is not affiliated to a carrier. For example, an ISP, Ana Irrebata, well, that is not a neutral data center. It doesn't have to be related to any other carrier. So that is a neutral data center. Those you see here are the neutral data centers in the region. And so the, the names of some uh, work, some of these are working in the region and they have provided international connectivity. Thank you, Jorge. Are there more questions? Yes, we have three more questions. Anaí is a very popular speaker today. Her presentation was one of the most awaited presentations of the, of the meeting. So, Carlos Sanabria, what is the megabit per second price in those countries where they don't have submarine cape? Thank you for your question. Well, this depends. Can you send me an email? Because the price varies largely from one market to another. In Sao Paulo, these have the cheapest ones per megabit per second. So this depends on several different <laughs> factors. Muchas gracias, Anaí, Jorge, tenemos alguna Thank consulta? you, Anaí, Jorge, do you have any more questions? Yes, here, Oscar Javier Cárdenas is asking, what is the value of international uh, bandwidth and how much has it increased in, in Bogotá and how much has it increased in recent years? Well, 
I don't have that information here. So uh, could you please send me an email address? Because we, we well, we only have one minute, 47 seconds, and I wouldn't be able to give you that figure now. Thank you, Anaí. If you wish, we can leave your email in the chat so that they can contact you. Jorge? We go on with you. Well, here we have one of Guillermo Arriero that says, uh, considering um, the new uh, a bandwidth, the new projects, we can continue the bandwidth prices to go down. Yes, the prices in the market, in the telecom market, always have that uh, um, that characteristic. Sometimes we wonder how is it that the companies and the carriers make money. It's because of the volume. The tendency in Latin America follows the same trends that we see in other markets, such as North America, Europe, and Asia. And the tendency is to reduce prices. We don't know how quickly they will um, go, go down. It all depends uh, on how many on the, pro the availability. You may have seen that in, as an average, they dropped by 22 to 23% in all in the routes, but uh, Bogota was the one that uh, dropped uh, the fastest, but it depends uh, on uh, several factors. But uh, they, the prices will uh, drop at different paces, but they're go it's going down. Thank you, Anai. Well, we are, have no more time, Sandra. Could you tell us whether we could um, have any more questions or should we go to the break? Yes, we can still answer uh, a couple of questions of the Q&A. Thank you, Sandra. Jorge? Well, we have time for two questions. Here we have one by Flavio Rodriguez that says, hello, do you have any information of terrestrial cables in the region? We don't have any information available such as a submarine uh, cable, that, that's for everyone, but we have terrestrial cable information, but that's only if you have a subscription. But free of charge, we only offer what we, you have uh, in a website on uh, submarine cables. We go on with you, Jorge. The last question by Esteban Lescano is a excellent presentation. In some of the countries in the region, there's are there any specific uh, like laws that may be highlighted as a positive model to favor the implementation of data centers, the development of ISPs, or the arrival of submarine cables? Thank you for your question, Esteban. And that's a rather tricky question because you may answer it, the, the, different, the different countries uh, face it in a different way. There are some that are more friendly with in, uh, foreign investment, uh, including submarine cables. The IXP, well, uh, uh, about the IXPs, the development of IXPs, uh, check it in the website. There are different models that work. I, I assume that there you will be able to find but as to data centers. It depends not just for a data center, uh, like saying, well, I'm going to build a, the building there and that's it. But it's important to know if the local or regional government um, uh, support this kind of business. You need electricity. You remember that a data center uses a lot of power. And uh, if it's very expensive in a country, then maybe that will be a drawback. So there are different factors that have an impact. It's a different world. And that is why that Latin America, in spite of the fact, um, well, it, 
uh, Latin America is a region in general, but the countries have very different landscapes.